Sun Jack can I help? Feels like it's in my back most of the time. Right. Sorry, Craig's killing me. Oh, yeah. How many did you used to smoke a day? 30 to 50. 30 to 50? Yeah, when I was smoking, yeah. The right side of my stall is changing continuously. Hurts like hell. Mm -hmm. Touch it and I scream sometimes. Each day I wake up, I think, oh, Jesus Christ, another day. I don't like the look of the colour of that. I don't like the sound of the pain either. Sun coming out. No, it's right, lovely. Isn't it? It's supposed to be all right, isn't it? Now the rest well, it's of the week. Supposed to be, isn't it? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Slater. Wrong end. Come on this way. <laughs> well then, come on in. Come and have a seat. Hi. I have some boils. Right. Been okay. Troubling me for some weeks now. Um, I tried putting magnesium sulfate on them to bring them to okay. the surface, but nothing's really helped. How long have you had those for? They, they've been going on on and off now for a couple of years. Have they? Yeah, okay. I had a seven-headed one, what, three and a half, four years ago, yeah. on the bottom. That was very sore. Yeah. So that, that ended up having to be lanced. But I just seem to keep getting them. It's small when I shave. OK. And I, it's not sore when I shave, it's normal. But, but then you get boils afterwards. Yes, yeah, yeah. Sounds like you've got an infection there. Mm. Um, should we put, uh, have a look at it? No, no, is no, it? It's is fine. It, it's fine. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. But you're all right if we. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. Can I come in? Yes. <sighs> Sorry. All right, gosh. They're going all the way down and then they're But they're always just on the outside, they're not actually inside your bit. They've been going down that way, yes. And I have some, I've, I've had a few on my bottom as well. Oh, they... but they're so painful. Yeah, I can see that they are. That's fine, do get yourself dressed up and come on out. <clears throat> OK, so those infections, those are little boils, as you say. They are boils, yeah. Right? And okay. they're, essentially, what's happened is, when you shave... Yep. The, um... Hair follicle goes down instead of up. And you get a little bit of infection around the base of the hair follicle. Okay. Why and do it... they not want to come out? Well, it's, it's because of the shaving that sometimes then you get a tiny bit of skin growth over it and it just means that it can trap some of the bugs in right. over, uh, in the hair follicle and so it happens more commonly when you shave. Right. Um, what we need to do is to try and reduce the amount of bacteria down there. Right. To... What causes bacteria down there? Well, it's, uh, actually, we're all covered in bacteria all over our skin, right. all, uh, okay. everywhere. Some wash just to help reduce the yeah, bacteria are you there. Well, when I wash. Well, I'm going to try something that's um, a little different from that, just okay. um, to see whether that helps settle yeah. it down. The other thing to do is just think about not shaving there, because obviously that will <laughs> reduce the chance that you get the infection. There, there, there. is but no I, point. And if you're getting other infections, or you're getting this as an ongoing thing, yeah. should we be doing any other tests? It's not unreasonable to check your blood test, as I say, and then we'll see what's happened when we've got the tests. You don't get any under your armpits <laughs> or anywhere else. No, well, no. I use a different type of razor. I use BIC for there and electric for there. OK. Blood test you can book in as well, and then I'll okay. see you with the result. Okay. All right? Yeah. All right. Cheers, then. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye darling. Three trips for older people. Oh, sorry. Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just part of the Bristol Ageing Better project. Offering older people the chance to benefit from day I trips. Like what are you looking at that for, Jackie? Well, because I'm an older person, going. yeah. We're trying to work out where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, I'm Dr. Gosh. Come and sit down. Thanks. I'm having problems sleeping. I got this thing where it's, when I get up in the morning, as soon as I wake up, I feel so sick and I gotta get out of the bed because I think something bad's gonna happen if I stay there. Right. And this has been happening for quite a while. Okay. So I've been treated 
for depression. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. But now I'm not even going to bed, I'm just sleeping in the chair. Yeah. So what exactly happens when you try and go to bed? Do you get to sleep to start with? No, as soon as my bum hits the bed, right. I, I feel sick. But what, what are you sort of worried about? What do you feel like? I just think so, if I stay there and try and go back to sleep, I think something terrible is going to happen. I'm the eldest of 11 children. All right. But I've had three siblings much younger than me die in the last three years. Right. And I'm a widow. I've been a widow now 26 years. Mm. And it gets harder. I'm sure it does. People say, oh, time's a great healer. It's not. It's still very lonely, isn't it, for you? I've wanted to die for the last 26 years. Have you? Yeah. I would not do something to promote my own death because I would not want my children to go through what I went through. Yeah, sure. That is the only thing that stops me. Sure, so sure. each day I wake up, I think, oh, Jesus Christ, another day. You're here whether you want to be here or not. Yeah, sure. Must sure. be a reason for it. Well, there must be a reason for it, mustn't there? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Just bug a lot of people on the way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think would help with all of this? I see you've tried some antidepressants in the past, haven't you? I did, and, oh, God, they you made didn't. me so bad. You didn't really get on with them no. at all, did you? I mean, it sounds to me... I mean, there are a lot of groups that can help people who've been feeling, you know, feeling down or struggling a bit. Yeah. And if you're the sort of person, particularly, who is quite sociable by nature, you might really find that helpful. Would you like to give that a go? I don't think so. I'm, you wouldn't? I'm not ready for the lunch with the old people. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, the other thing is, have you met um, Heather, who's one of the receptionists here? She got me... Um, I was going to do some voluntary work. Yeah. Can I ask Heather to give you a ring again and see what, see what else she can yeah. do? Because yeah, I think it it's more... Be something like I to think do. it's something you need to do, isn't it? Because I think I know, it's my... more the social side of things, really. The falling asleep. I wonder, what, could I have a blood test to see that I'm not anemic? I've always had it. Oh, no, you did. You had one in March. Yeah. Um, it would show up if, if I was... It was slightly borderline. I, it was just about all right. Let's check again and make sure you don't need any iron tablets. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking, because over can... the years yeah. I, I have had yeah. to go on. Yeah. And that can, that can give you problems sleeping, definitely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. OK, so book in for that, and I'll ask Heather to have a chat with you. OK. OK. Oh, sorry you had to get me on. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> the sun was shining over the nursery courtyard. What's a courtyard? A field. What's a courtyard? Is it a field? A courtyard. Is it like a field? It's in a isn't it? Yeah, it's like big concrete. OK. Yeah. <clears throat> You're a new patient here? Yes. yes. Um, been overseas. Right. And where have you been? All over. Africa and the last three years was Sri Lanka. Right. Very nice. So, moving around. What were you bit. doing? I'm a minerals person, so I'm scratching around looking for gold and diamonds normally. Right. Um, um, you're haven't not found enough yet because I'm still working. So. Yeah. And you're not from the UK originally? <laughs> no, I am. I'm fully English, but right. not many gold deposits around Bristol or <laughs> no, <right. laughs> diamonds or a bit of coal in South Wales. Used to be some tin in Cornwall. OK. Um, so no. what have you come for today? Uh, the main one I actually want to come back is I've had a lot of sun. Yeah. And my brother um, had very bad melanoma, stage four, very lucky to still be around after six, seven years. Right. And I'm so I've had lots of things burnt off me, taken off me. Yep. I now have this thing on my head, and of course, coming to a doctor, it's it's the smallest it's been in seven months. Right. It looks a bit weird. It comes and goes. It bleeds a bit. Right. It gets bigger, smaller. So I basically wanted someone to look at that. Okay. To... All right. So I'm just going to look at it with a bit of light and slant some magnification. Okay. So it's a raised lump with a little dip in the middle. Um, it is a bit sort of pearly. So there is a small possibility that that is not a malignant melanoma, mm. but a different sort of skin cancer. And sometimes if I just scratch it a tiniest bit, it'll bleed and, and run down a fair bit. And yeah. I believe that's not necessarily... So it's six millimetres. I think it'd be reasonable to go and see somebody about that. There's an urgent referral where you'll get seen within two weeks. I'm actually going away right now. Yeah. For 13 days. OK. Right. So I would like to have done you. it urgently, you know, but... Yeah. I, I OK, well, hopefully they'll, they'll just see you... After two weeks. After that, yeah. 
Um, have you actually had skin cancers removed? I've had, uh, I'm never quite sure, carcinomas, basal... Basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma. Okay. Is that classified as a skin cancer? Yeah. It is, yeah. I think I've had one or two chopped off. Are you going to be in the UK? In no, I'm going to Italy for 13 days, right. basically. I'm actually going to leave now. Our taxi's coming in half an hour. Right. 45. OK. I'll put it at the front desk in an envelope. You can pick it up when you get home, OK, okay. from your holiday. OK. Thank you, doctor. That's all right. Cheers. Bye now. How are you today? Good, thanks. You? Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> sun's come back out, so I'm happy with the sunshine. Oh, good. Yeah. You're going to have some time after your shift to play with it? Well, I'll uh, be home about seven. Oh. Does Sally want to sit over there? I was just getting you yep. a seat, sir. I'm oh, sorry, thanks. I don't know your name, right. sir. Keith. 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 Hello, Keith. I'm Linda. Hi, Linda. And what's your name? Right. This is Lily. Lily. Hello, Lily. And which side do you want the injection? Maybe the left, because I'm right-handed. That makes okay. sense. Okay. Turn around. That's fine then. Come. You go that way then, Lily. That's yeah. right. Is that enough room to get That's whatever fine. you need? Only awesome. want the top of your arm. Okay. So I'm giving you a booster of your tetanus. We talked about it on the phone. Didn't yeah. We? Tetanus, diphtheria, and polio, all in one. Sally came to see me because she needed some travel injections because she is travelling to Chicago in September to compete with the Great Britain Blind Sailing Team. I said what I was doing, didn't I? You did, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Exciting, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so she's got to deal with the training now. <laughs> Sally was born with normal vision, but when she was about six years old, she contracted an eye condition called uvitis, which has left her with only 5% of vision. <laughs> is the training based in Bristol? Uh, some of it is. So um, we've just come from the swimming pool, actually, done 30 lengths. And yesterday, I was doing yeah. some quite evil core fitness um, training to simulate uh, racing a boat. So <laughs> pulling a 40 kilo tyre around the, the gym. Right, OK. And then tomorrow I'm off to um, UK Sailing Academy to train with the Great Britain squad. So we'll be on the boats at sea. So. Wow. And where, where is that? Portsmouth? Or it's it's um, cows in the Isle of oh, Wight. Yeah. Nice, and you're going to have nice weather for it as well, so yeah. it'll be lovely, wouldn't it? As long as there's wind, yeah. we, we, we don't care what, what else there is, but if it's sunny, that's an extra bonus. It is, isn't it? I should <laughs> think so, too. <laughs> so, you OK with needles? Yeah. Yeah, all right, then. I'm just going to pull your sleeve up a little bit there, Sally, all right? Here we go, then. Sharp sting. There we go. All done. Great. There is that all right to put down, yeah? all right, that's fine. So, that would last, in theory, ten years. Great. Thank you Best for fitting me in so quick, thanks. OK. It's a gold medal, won't you? A gold medal. <laughs> no, <laughs> pressure, no pressure, no pressure. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Just a gold medal. OK, <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. And you. Bye -bye, thanks, Linda. Linda. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my God, look at these. Oh, these cakes look amazing. Very rarely eat cake, and so it has to be really good for proper. Rarely eat cake? Well, these are always good when Heather does them. George Anderson, please. Oh. Hello, George. Hi. Sorry to keep you. That's all right. I was late myself, actually. It's all worked out, then. Yeah. <laughs> Come and take a seat. <sighs> How are you? Extremely tired. I'm exhausted all the time. I don't know what's going on, but the right side of my skull is changing continuously. Mm -hmm. It's getting big bumps, big dips, hurts like hell. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going on. I haven't banged it or anything, but it's completely deformed. There's not an inch that is smooth, and it hurts. Touch it, and I scream sometimes. OK, so how long has this been with you for? Months. OK. It's months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's just have a look and see what's going on. Yeah. Um, have you found any bits that are itchy or oh, any yeah, particular yeah, yeah, yeah. spots? But they change continuously. Every day there's a, a new... And it's not like swelling because it's really hard. It just feels like the skull itself is, has You're... gone over. Well, there's nothing to be concerned about in the sense that there's no skin lesions or scalp lesions because some people get cysts or other things or yeah, spots or Oh, no, it's a very different kind of pain than the cysts. But, like. I mean, it all feels like a normal... You know, it feels normal to me. Really? Um, 
And this really gets me, especially in the evening, it starts to hurt. And I'll just brush my head or just touch my head and I'm just like shocked at the amount of pain that there is. And I start touching and I find all these painful spots. So it might be what we call dysesthesia or it's an yeah. altered sensation. Yeah. It's almost perhaps some kind of superficial nerve thing going on. But I think we'll just watch that. George is currently 59. He has quite a few complex medical health problems. He suffers from cluster headaches. He's hepatitis C positive and HIV positive. HIV, if it's caught early, is no longer a death sentence. In fact, people can live uh, a near normal lifespan because there have been significant advances in the medicines used to control the rate of growth of the virus. I'm pleased to say that currently George doesn't suffer from any issues related to his HIV. It's well controlled. However, unfortunately, has also been under significant stress recently, which has led to anxiety and low mood symptoms. I didn't take the, the antidepressants at all. Okay. I made a conscious decision that because they take so long to work, and there's certain things that, you know, they basically castrate you. I mean, your sex life just disappears. And, and that is one of the only things that actually keeps me alive and happy a little bit. Mm. And to eliminate that, that would be just dramatically wrong. If, you've, if you're happy not to start that, that's fine. Yeah, I need my, um, my faculties and I actually need the, a little bit of extra emotion to get through something instead of just kind of letting everything just, you know, which is what happens a lot of times. That's quite a valid point, actually, you because know. sometimes some people can feel a little bit um, subdued on them. Yeah. You're not vomiting? You're not waking up no. at night with headaches? Not those headaches, no. No. Um, and no symptoms on your face or in your jaw or in your mouth? No. Okay. No, no, no. All right. Well, you're going to be do some tests and things when you go to the Brecon unit yeah. next week, but maybe we could touch base in six weeks or so mm. and you can keep me posted. Yeah. Obviously, if anything bothers you before that, yeah, then sure. come in sooner. Sure. That's it, yeah. Good. Nice to see you. Likewise. Take care. You too. Enjoy the weather while it lasts. Mm -hmm. Laura Smith, please. Morning. All right. Just while I remember, I've got a message on my screen saying, can you go to reception after you've seen me? OK, There's right. some, some message for them to discuss with you. Yeah, yeah, all right, lovely. Okay. I'm right. just happy I got an appointment, right. to be honest. OK, what can I do for um, you? So this pain I've been getting, if you've, my last two appointments yeah, I had this spot of pain see, complaining yeah. about, um, I finally got my ultrasound tomorrow. Which, Good. Which is like a, a light at the end of the tunnel, but today it's the longest I've had an attack for. It's like, right. woke me up at like five o'clock. What's the pain like? Stabbing, yeah. I would say. Feels like it's in my back most of the time. Right, OK. But then it's also down here. Yeah. Sorry, Craig's killing me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I don't normally get weepy, but I think it's because I'm not it? sleeping. Yeah. But um, hence why I made the appointment because I haven't ever gone three hours in that amount of pain. Tramadol isn't doing anything. My mum has been giving it to me since it started. Right. But um, and I'm also concerned. What do I even do once I've had the ultrasound? How do I find out? Because I just want it gone. I don't know what it is. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I haven't ever gone three hours in that amount of pain. And I, I don't know what I'm doing to kickstart it. Or... This is what the ultrasound's for, I suppose. Yeah. When I was saying I think it's gallstones, and I'm thinking, well, normally food or something kicks yeah. that off, and I'm not doing anything okay. to start this pain off, so... Right. When you get the pain, you use tramadol. Yeah, yeah. But I'm taking tramadol as more of, like, a prevention. Right. Because it's pointless taking it when you're having the attack. And when you're taking it, how many are you taking? I'm only taking two a day because it's making me constipated. Yeah. I think... Rather than taking it to try and stop it coming, I think we, we need to try and take it when it comes. Really? Yeah. I just want to have a little look at you. OK, if you jump up on the bed for me to feel your tummy. So, have you got the pain now? Um, I can feel it in my back. In your back. But it's more of a niggling. It's not okay. like the agony that I'm getting. I'll just have a little feel okay. around. OK. It's all there, Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I tense up. No, it's all right. It's... That's fine. Yeah. OK. Would you mind just doing a urine sample, just to check we're not missing anything in your kidneys? Yeah, if I can get anything out. <laughs> so if you go and do that now and come straight back in. Yeah. Okay. That's literally all I got. I think. Yeah, that's fine. That's all I need. 
Okay. Have you got your period at the moment? No. No. Okay. So it's two pluses of blood in here. I don't think it's a urine infection, but I'm going to send it to the lab just to be sure. Okay. okay. One of the things that can cause sort of loin pain, pain going through to the back, is kidney stones. Oh, and that so can cause is. blood in the urine. Okay. So I think what we need to do is wait for this scan tomorrow. Yeah. If it shows gallstones, fine, then we refer you to have it removed. Okay. If it doesn't show anything, I think we'd then need to consider do we need to do a CT to look for kidney stones? Yeah. In the meantime, I can give you a sh small supply of tramadol, but like you say, they are very addictive and they can do cause constipation. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I could give you that does work very well for gallstone type pain is a suppository. So I don't know how you'd cope with that. How no, you'd feel I'm about fine it. with that. Good. But if it's lasting this long, I. Oh, sorry. It's all right. I think I needed a bit of a rant as well. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thank okay, you so much. no problem. Have a nice day. You all too. Right. Bye bye. bye. To say kiss. Oh no! I stood right for my bus and I'm looking up the road and the bus is coming down the road. And oh, and you put your hand out. And I, I put my hand out and I went like that. <gasps> but he Did was you coming. knock him off his bike? No, he was pushing his bike oh. up the road on Hello. the wrong side of the road. Well, there you so go then. You had a nasty injury, didn't you? I did. I've just been up to the, see the consultant. He's just taken the stitches. OK. It was a bike accident? Yeah. Came off the bike and displaced the shoulder, so they've put it back. I went for a CT scan at the RUH, mm, yeah, both, and yeah. that was why I was coming back, really, because they said mm. you might want to go see the GP just to check, because I told them that I get these really bizarre headaches, but I get a line across my eye. But it's not blurry, it's just a complete blackout of half of my eye. Not two, it's only usually the one, usually the left. OK, because that's an unusual pattern for a headache or a migraine or anything right. like that, because mm -hmm. normally with a headache or a migraine, what you're talking about is a loss of a field of vision and yeah. it will be the same field irrespective of which yeah, eye is no. open. No, it's not. How long have you had the headaches for? Uh, this has been going on months and months. How often do you get them? Probably one or two a month. How long do they last for when you get them? Um, the intensity lasts about 10 minutes and then I'll either go to sleep and try and sleep it off or it tends to just fade off. Do you feel sick with a headache? Sometimes mm. a bit sick. Do you sick. actually vomit no, or not? No. no. That's, that's migraine, my book. OK, yeah, so yeah. A, a visual warning yeah. followed by a nasty yeah, headache with I some think, nausea. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like migraine. Yeah. OK. So one of the problems with... Um, doing CTs of people's heads, and you might do it for one reason, and find, something, find else. something else. We call this the vomit syndrome. Vomit stands for Victim of Medical Im Imaging Technology. Okay. So you, this might be the vomit All syndrome, right, yeah, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, so this is an important bit. So there's no bleed inside your head. Grey matter and the white matter looks normal in the head, so that's, yeah. you know, the thinking material. <laughs> Down at the base of the skull, mm. they're saying that there's something that looks a bit funny, and it might be it's a blood vessel that's slightly enlarged, or by lacuna infarcts, they, they mean a type of stroke. What are we talking about? I've had a slightly bad back for a few months. Uh -huh. Sort of stiffness, stuff like that. Mm. Nothing too major, just, you know, you wake up in the morning and you're always kind of there. Yeah. But then a week ago, last Sunday, I... Well, I played cricket on Saturday, felt fine. And then on Sunday morning, I woke up and couldn't tie my own shoes, never mind. Right. Do much of anything. Um, sure. And it's uh, been like that for about a week now. So you've had the stiffness in the back for the last six months or so? <sighs> yeah, I think it's a long-standing, six-foot-three, lanky... Don't sit in chairs properly, bad posture all my life and all that kind of stuff. And it's just finally yeah. caught up with me. And, yeah. and then I changed jobs last year and I think I just didn't have a very good setup at yeah. work. The wrong chair and this, that and the other for a few months and it's just yeah. kind of brought everything to the surface sure. a little bit. But the stiffness is different from pain or...? This is, yeah, this feels different. It feels like an injury, like sure. a, a muscle tweak or something. Sure. And let me just double check, the pain's just in the back, it's not radiating into the legs? No, it's all like it's all lower back. My, all... My, the general stiffness I've had from a few months is tends to be lower back, but it? depending on how I sleep and stuff, it can be a bad neck and other things. Let's but... just lift this leg up. No weakness or numbness or tingling? No, or... not that. And peeing and pooing normally, all, just all checking fine. the nerves are yeah. all OK. Stand up for me. Um, I'm just going to press all here, if that's all right. 
Is it sore in the sides? It's not sensitive to touch or anything is like it that. Is it sore in there at all? No. Just touch your toes for me. <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> are you so are I, you quite I, inflexible? I'm fairly inflexible anyway, yeah. so, so there's no chance stay, I'd be able to stay touch sideways and just my toes, but just quite bend, bend, bend. Areas. I get to about there and it starts to hurt and if okay. I go much further it's going to... Would that be your hurt. normal range of movement, do you think? No, it's a little bit. Well, okay. I'm somewhat inflexible anyway, I have to admit. Sure. And in terms of, I'm just looking at your medicines, you're not on anything regularly? No, I've been taking ibuprofen for a few days. Yeah. Well, really do you want me to give you some strong anti-inflammatories then? That might be worth trying. OK, well, let, um, let's try that. Okay. I think that it is likely that you've just tweaked it. There's no worrying signs of it being in the, affecting the nerves, which yeah. is the medical worry for back pain. So I can just reassure you that it should all just settle down. So that's the, what's happened just in the last week. Mm -hmm. In terms of the last six months, though, I'm yeah. hearing that it may be that this is a stiffness problem and that there may be some underlying yeah. issue there. Now, there so... is a condition of stiffness in the morning that affects young men and causes back pain. Okay. And I think if you've been having that, then it would be a reasonable thing for us to check a blood test and an X-ray. Well, yeah. The condition is called ankylosing spondylitis, which is an inflammation problem, and that's right. the thing that we just need to make sure that isn't there. Okay. And you know, it's quite likely that that's not going to be the case. But I'd just like to make sure that we get the blood test and the X-ray, no and then get you back in to see your own doctor with the results of those tests okay. in a few weeks' time. Yeah. All right. If any other problems in the meantime, then let us know. But I think it will all just settle down with that plan. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Cheers. Okay, Hope it settles down. Cheers. Bye. I would be astonished if you'd had stroke, really. I mean, it seems really unlikely. Mm. You're very young, you're very fit, you're very healthy. There's mm. no reason why that should have happened. What we do need to, to do, having got that report, is just do a quick neurological examination and get blood tests and uh, check your blood pressure to make sure you've got no risk yeah. factors for, okay. for developing a stroke. OK. okay? Yep. Let's do the blood pressure first, actually. <laughs> is this all making sense? Yeah. It's just <laughs> Okay. Have you been back on your bike since? No. I did ask and he said, I prefer you not to go on for at least six weeks. Okay, that sounds sensible. Yeah. So that's a normal blood pressure. Okay, so that's yeah. very reassuring. Okay, I'm going to shine some lights in your eyes next. Um, we'll turn the main lights off for this. So we're looking for the nerve head, if it's bulging or not. That looks absolutely normal. That's fine. Okay, a bit bright suddenly. <laughs> OK? Yeah. So, look at me, and I want you to follow my finger with your eyes. Do you see double at any stage while you're doing this? No. I want you to raise your forehead up, close your eyes tightly, don't let me open them, that's fine. Show your teeth, blow out your cheeks. So I'm just going to feel both sides of your face, I want you to tell me if it feels the same on both sides. Yeah. Feel the same? Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> just squeeze my fingers as tight as you can. The neurological examination is normal. Yeah. The blood pressure is normal. Mm -hmm. We should just check some blood tests looking for other things okay. that can predispose yeah. to stroke. So we're talking about okay. raised sugar levels. Yeah. We're talking about your cholesterol level. Yeah. I imagine it's all going to be yeah. normal. It would still be good to just find out a bit more detail about the, the headaches. headaches. I'd like you to just clarify the visual yeah. symptoms a bit more and, okay. and let me know after you've had the yeah, next yeah. one. Yeah. I'd like you to keep a, a diary of when it happens and I'd like to know a bit more about where in the head it is when you get it. It's All right? Yeah, you can give you. me a ring to tell me about the a bit, bit more about the migraine once you've yeah, had another one. Yeah, I will do. All right, yeah, okay. thanks then. Yeah. then. Thank you. I hit me knee like that, but look, Lynn, it's a big lump already. And I said, I might have to come in on crutches tomorrow. The patient, the patient said to me, you need a doctor. And I went, they're too busy for me. <laughs> Have a seat. So I'm presuming this is about your leg. <laughs> it is, yes. Because it's a bit of a mystery, really, isn't it? Yeah, have, have the scan people sent the information? Yes, yeah, so they, they have, said yes. um, there's no sign of a clot. No. Which is good. Yes. Possibly early cellulitis. It's just got worse. By the end of Saturday, it was extremely painful. And now the pain goes from the toes yeah. all the way up to the top of my thigh. Right, so where is the pain? It starts off because I've got um, pins and needles in the toes in here, I can hurt. And what's that from? I don't know. When I drove home from work Sunday night... Can have a look at the other one? I struggled to feel the clutch. It's old colour now, isn't it? It is. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah, How long's that been for? The last 24 hours, isn't it? Looking for a pulse. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm mm. pretty sure I can feel a pulse. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it is good. <laughs> That's good news. It's alive. I don't like the look of the colour. No. What I'm going to just do is see if I can find a nurse to just check. We can hear a pulse as well. Right. Okay. Okay. Sorry? I'm feeling quite hot. You're again, feeling then. hot. Come in. Hello, hello. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi so he's had pain and swelling in the leg and we've ruled out a DVT, but it just looks a different colour. Yes, it looks very pale. Yeah. Isn't it? I think I can feel them, but I'd just like to hear it. Oh. Is that just doing that, sorry. is it? That's all right, that's all right. All right, huh? That sounds right, doesn't it? Yeah. That's good news. Fine, all right. Mm, thank, thank you. you. Just yes. Yeah. Fantastic, yes. thank you. Right, OK. What I want to do is ring and speak to one of the vascular surgical doctors. I don't like the look of the colour of that. I don't like the sound of the pain either. Bit out of puff, aren't you? I am, yeah. Why are you here? Yeah. About a fortnight ago, I was. I had a bug, bad, sweating. Mm -hmm. Chest has just got slowly worse and worse and worse. And I, last night was, I just more or less sat up all night just coughing. Right. Breathing's difficult as well. I'm trying to cough to get some up, nothing's coming up. Mm -hmm. But I can feel it. <coughs> rapping. <laughs> Excuse. <coughs> OK, have you got any history of any breathing problems? No, never. OK, do you smoke at all? No. Have you ever smoked? Yes. 12 years ago. You gave up 12 years yeah. ago? How long did you smoke for? Since I was about 15, 16. Have you noticed yourself wheezing at all? <coughs> yeah, I am wheezing. And how many did you use to smoke a day at the most? 30 to 50. 30 to 50 yeah, a I was day? Smoking, yeah. How do you find enough time in the day to smoke 50 cigarettes? I used to work cigarettes? on the markets. So you get there at 6 o'clock in the morning. Train. Fair play for giving up then. Well done. Yeah. What made you give up? Grandson coughed watching. Um, Thomas the Tank Engine in front of me and had a fag in my hand, and I said, that's it, finished. He coughed in front he of you from you smoking. Yeah, and they stopped. Um, right, so we have this thing that we call pack years. So we work out your smoking history based on the number of pack years of smoking. Yeah. So the calculation is based on 20 cigarettes a day. So if you smoke for 10 years and you smoke 20 a day, <coughs> that's 10 pack years. Yeah. Okay, so let's average at 40. So you've got 68 pack years of smoking. Not proud. That is very significant Dying smoking it. history. Yeah. So anybody who's smoked for a, a long time has <coughs> uh, a significant risk of something called COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Yeah. So it's basically where you've got permanent damage to your lungs. Yeah. It makes you a lot more susceptible to chest infections yeah. and things like that. So pop your finger in there for me. Let's check you over now anyway. <coughs> you look quite well, so hopefully yeah, it's well. not anything sort of like pneumonia or anything, but I'm going to have a listen to your chest. Right, have a stand up for me. Right, can we lift your T-shirt right up? Right, nice deep breath. So have a listen at the back. Try and touch your elbows together in front of you. OK, so you've got some crackles lower down on this right-hand side. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> I think you've definitely got a bit of a chest infection. Yeah. It would be wise if we give you some antibiotics. Yeah. And then once that's clear, you need to come back and have a review of your breathing again. Yeah. And if you're feeling worse at any point, rather than getting better, make sure you come and see us again. OK, thank you very much. That's really helpful. Thank you for your help. Yep, bye-bye. So, he was really helpful, the vascular doctor. He says the colour can alter and be very pale and dusky just from the swelling. And the fact that we've got the pulse means the blood supply is OK. okay. So that's, cool. that's, that's, good. that's good, good news. news. Good news, yes. yes. Can I have a quick feel? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. If you can lie on the bed, that'd be good. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where does that hurt? <sighs> And then a hip. Hip. OK. I can look at it. Hang on. You all right? Back of the ankle, eh? OK. Right. All right. You haven't fallen at all. 
No. no. Okay. I wish I had. Yeah. Can we bend your leg at the knee? Yeah. No. And no. no. Where does that hurt? The muscle that goes all the way up to my bottom. All right. Up you go. <clears throat> With Raymond, we'd ruled out a clot in the leg, which was an important thing to do, but when I examined him on the bed, he could barely move his legs at all. He was obviously in significant pain. I was concerned there was either some hip problem going on or a problem with the lumbar spine. I think we need some more imaging today, so I think the best way of doing that is going to A&E. So, so. Right. I really hope they help us get to the bottom of this. It would be good. It would be really good. It would good. be good, wouldn't it? OK. Thank you very much. That's all right. OK. <laughs> OK, thank you. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 no, you made me laugh. I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> 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 Oh my God, I've just been sat in the waiting room laughing my head off. My sister put a photo of me on Facebook and, um... <laughs> eating a chicken carcass. And one of my friends said, is that a rat? Well, I... <laughs> and I said, no, it's my sister. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, <laughs> well, right. Well, good. I'm glad it's keeping you amused this morning. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so funny. I just have to show you. It'll hopefully, it'll make your day. It's, uh, well, it's it quite. It's, it is quite a photo. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Keeps me going. This is great. <laughs> How are you getting on? Uh, my knees are, on the whole, a pain. Mm, sure. <laughs> Still very painful. Mm. So at Christmas, I had pain in my right knee. Yeah. Which then got better. Yeah. And then I had a very bad acute pain in my left knee. Yes. And that is what is giving me most of the problems. Right. And we referred you for the MATS referral. Yes. And they will look at both. Now, the right knee was the one that showed bad arthritis changes in the scan. Yes. And a little bit of wear and tear of the cartilage in the middle of the knee. Sometimes that can get locked in between the middle of the bones of the joint and cause your knee to lock and get stuck in one position. And that sometimes then needs them to trim it away and clean up the inside of the knee with a little operation. Whether it will need you to have a scan on the left-hand side as well will be down to what the MATS team say when they see you, I would suggest. I would say generally it is getting better, sure. but it's really affecting my life. I think there's a difference between the two things that are happening, because one, we know that you've got really bad arthritis, and that's a different thing that's causing the pain from the thing that might be causing the locking, which is the cartilage oh, right. problem. So let's boost the painkillers, wait for the match referral. I'll see you in about four to six weeks when we've got that, and I'll organise the scan. Yeah, that's absolutely But please fine. let me know if things get worse or you're worried or... Or something else, all right? Okay, yep, that's absolutely fine. Sorry about my entry. My goodness, that's <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. <laughs> Keep me going all day. <laughs> Good. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you, love. Take care. I'll see you again as and when. Bye bye now. Hello. You say thank you. <laughs> Have a nice holiday. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for seeing me on such no short notice, Doctor. That's okay. Come on in, have a seat. I'm Dr. Graham. How can I help? Right. Uh, 
if you look at my history, last year I had this case of a, a similar situation like this where my mouth lost kin, I couldn't eat very much. But compared to it now, that was like a f three or a four. This started off again on Tuesday or Wednesday. Yes. I have lost skin everywhere. I haven't eaten a solid meal for four days. Yeah. I went to the pharmacist. They recommended something called codeine with paracetamol. Yes. Which the pain has subsided, but even now here I can still feel that th constant throbbing. My head is yeah. hurting. And, but this hasn't happened for over a year now. Yes. I don't know what's happened. Okay. This... And do you have this kind of problem anywhere else on your body? No. No. Nobody you don't have else. any problems genital? ulcers no. or anything like that. What do you mean by gentle ulcers? Well, you've got mouth ulcers, that's yeah. what these are. They haven't got anything on your penis or anything no. like that, no. Nothing. Just Nothing very all. rarely there can be a connection okay. when it's quite severe, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. No, no. Uh, can I have a look in your mouth? Right. Yeah. Uh, the only thing, Doctor, yeah. my mouth probably smells a bit bad. Oh, don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to probably put on a mask or something, at least, at least it makes no, me no. feel a bit better. <laughs> no, no, I've, I've, I'll be fine with that. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Are you Phoebe? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Let's give you a chair, Phoebe. Are you going to sit there? There you go. Ready. And who's this, Phoebe? Nancy. Nancy? <laughs> i got some spots. Do you want to show the doctor where they are? They're on my belly. Well, wait a moment. I think I need to ask <laughs> Mummy a few questions first, and then I'll have a look at your spots in a moment. All right? How long has she had the spots for? About four and a half months. And they're only behind the legs here and a couple on the belly and they look like little skin tags. She's obviously reasonably well. She yeah, looks, she's she looks absolutely completely fine. Well. I think she's got a little bit of eczema as well on the back of her legs. Has she had eczema before? Never, no. Okay. The hot weather's brought it out. OK, more. we're going to have a look at your spots now, Phoebe. Will you show me your belly first? No, she's only got one. She's got a couple on this oh, side. Yes, you I can see. see where she's pit and they've yes. cleared. No, no, look, there's one. Look, that's a perfect one there. Yeah. The, the other thing is, Mummy wants me to look at your leg. Do you mind standing on the chair? If you just keep a hold on her. Yeah, a little bit. The name for that is molluscum. Yeah, that's what I couldn't remember. <laughs> I'll, I'll print off the sheet for you. So it's a, it, is a, it is a virus. And you don't want to do anything with them. Although they all go in the end, they can linger for quite a while. Yeah, it just feels like Common, it's... harmless, just try to ignore it. But is that definitely eczema on the back of her legs there? I or... think you'd call that eczema, but I, I, I mean, she may have got some spots and picked them and they've got a bit irritated. Let me give you some treatment. Yeah. Mild steroid, just for where it's bad. When, it, when you've cleared it up, leave it off and, and wait and watch what's happened. Okay. And if it then comes back, we would adopt a slightly different approach. Yeah. Here's some stuff on molluscum. I mean, she's got it very mild. It's quite likely she'll get more spots. If she picks them, she'll tend to infect herself, but you can't stop her picking no. them. No. So. Thank you. Right, Phoebe, <laughs> are you playing a game? I need his gloves. Phoebe, you may have that glove. Oh. Special present. Wow, doctor's glove. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you throw it up? No, no, it's that's Mummy's job. <laughs> take the glove and take the book. What do you say to the doctor, Phoebe? No! <laughs> Can I? <laughs> Very good. Right, you're going to take your glove? Yeah. It's lovely to see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'll see his next patient. Thank you. Goodness, it's quite a lot, aren't there? And then open up wide. Yeah, you've got a lot on the roof of your mouth oh. and on the back of your mouth as well. All right, so most of the time, this is due to a viral infection that we can't really name. But just occasionally, it could be that this is a viral infection called herpes. Have you heard of that? Isn't that an STD? It can be an STD, yeah, but it doesn't have to be, oh, OK? Yeah. And I'm just wondering whether it would be helpful just to rule that out. I'm just, just to, just to underscore you, though, yeah. because uh, I, haven't been, I haven't been actually sexually active for about eight months because my girlfriend has long distance yes. relationship. It's probably nothing to do with sex, this. Okay? OK, so there are two sorts of herpes. Right. Um, there's genital herpes right. and then there's herpes, which is just like really bad cold sores. Right, OK. okay? okay. And that is probably all it is, but it's right. really bad. So I think we need to do something, do, yeah. you know, investigate it a bit more. Um, OK, it's a little bit of a rough swab. So it makes it a bit sore, I'm sorry. No, as long as it helps okay. you find out what's wrong, yeah. I'm cool with okay. it. If you could lower your lips down, I'm just going to do it along here. Could 
you've got quite a few examples there. OK, that's great. That's done. OK, so that will take a few days to come back. If it's negative, then it hasn't really progressed us as to why this is happening. But some people do get terrible mouth ulcers. Yeah. Um, and there isn't very much that helps with mouth ulcers. I've got four gels which yeah. I'm constantly yeah. using. The problem is that as soon as you put them on, your mouth washes them away. If our, over the next week or two it's clearly just getting much worse and you're suffering a lot, then just come back in. OK? Doctor, thank you very much. That's all right. Good. See you later. Yeah, bye now. Bye. Michaela Farrell, please. I'm so sorry I missed it this morning. I wrote down it on time. Oh, seat. God. Thank you. How are things? Yeah, mm, same. How's my x-ray? Same. They're normal. Yeah. <laughs> um, the tablets aren't doing anything. I really kept on with them and the, pain, the side effects were fine. They the, went down. The pre gabolin Yes. Yes, yeah. And it's just still got this bloat and then this twisty kind of pain. I don't know what to do. And how often does the pain come? It's always there, just hanging around in this little patch. Like, I just don't know what to do now. I'm just... Last week's been quite bad. Right. I haven't really slept. What do you want to do, do you think? I don't know. I yeah. do some kind of... I know there might not be... Yeah, Sorry. Oh, God's sake. I'm just fed up and I just want yeah. this pain to go. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. I mean, do you think the bloating is a big thing? Yeah, massive. I'm so sick of it. I just look like I'm pregnant sometimes. Yeah. Like, that's not... Yeah. I never had this issue before. Yeah. OK. Something weird is going on. I don't know. Ugh. Hey, how's it going, Mum? Oh, hey. So, so, yeah, so I could basically... I came here, like, a few weeks ago because I had, like, a problem and it felt like there was, like, a lump in my throat when I was trying to breathe in. And um, I'm not too sure if it's all connected, but, like, you see, last night I basically couldn't get any sleep at all because I've got, like, this mad stabbing pain here. And then it sometimes can feel like a sensation up here. I got given omeprazole and a, another um, thing and maybe cooled it off a bit, but because, like, I've run out of that now, it's kind of, like, starting to get this neck sensation thing again. So the, the problems up here have been going on for a few weeks. You've yeah. Got... Better with the medication to some degree. Yeah, so like, and then that's know, finished. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, it's like last night I had like a, an episode I'd say where it was really at its height and I could really know, like really feel it. I guess the, that's been able to suppress it for mm -hmm. to some extent. I guess. Do you smoke? Just maybe smoke twice at night. Usually, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like that's it. I don't really smoke during the day. Alcohol. I don't really drink that much. To be honest, I'm like, not really a big drinker at all. Caffeine. Um, coffee a lot at work. Take like a lot of coffee at work, actually, I guess. So, like... Let me examine you. Right. So we're going to start at the top by looking in your throat. Say it on for me. Say ah. 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 It all looks normal in your throat. Now let's lie you on the couch and examine your tummy. Right. If we lift your shirt up. Sometimes, like, when I was lying down last night, they'll just feel like a pain there, like, do you know what I mean? And you're moving about, and I, but, like, even if I move, like, sat up like this, I'd be, like, aware of, like, oh, this kind of... OK, perfect. Good. There's a good chance that the two symptoms, the fe odd feeling up here and the discomfort down yeah. here, are interlinked. Right, right, yeah. What most commonly interlinks those two things... Yeah. ..is stomach acid. So sometimes when you get excessive acid production, it's uncomfortable around where your stomach is. Yeah. But also you get acid coming up and irritating your throat, and that can happen while you're awake, but also at night when you're asleep. The medications that you had, yeah. one of them was to suppress acid production. I think we should try a slightly longer course of the omeprazole. Right, so right. rather than two a day for a short period, one a day for a little longer. Now, while you're doing that, I think a a couple of lifestyle changes. We know that caffeine and nicotine yeah. are irritating to your stomach. Cutting out caffeine and trying to cut out the cigarettes yeah, yeah. will probably make a difference to the symptoms and, and allow your stomach to... To the get healed? Yeah, 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 totally, yeah, that's OK. okay. Thank you very much, anyway. Yeah, thank you very much for your time, on. Cheers. Thank you very much, cheers, on.
it's important for us to think how many tests we're going to do. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because I think tests can be quite difficult for you. To, the more we go through them, they get more invasive as well. Mm -hmm. And there's more radiation and that sort yeah. of thing, which isn't good either. Michaela is quite a new patient at the practice. She has sadly been suffering with pelvic and abdominal pain for approximately three years. She's been investigated quite significantly, but nothing has been found to help us work out the cause of her pain as yet. You know, I think it's really reassuring that all your bloods were normal. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, good. And your x-rays are normal, so it's good there's nothing sort of... There's nothing really bad. But it's also really frustrating, isn't it, yeah. that we can't say, ah, that's it. Yeah, I know. So, I don't know, what, what do you do now? <laughs> I think what we need to think about is helping you with the pain, really. If we got the pain better controlled... Yeah, definitely. I'm not saying get rid of it. Yeah. What our aim would be to manage it better. OK. And I wonder if we ask the pain clinic for some help with okay. that. Yeah. Because pain is a strange thing. The pain pathways are really tricky. And it's how we feel in ourselves affects the pain. And it's a bit of a vicious circle. Yeah. You know, if we, we feel, we can feel quite low and stressed due to pain, yeah. and then that can make the pain worse yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. So with the pain clinic, they haven't got any different medicines than what we use, mm -hmm. but they look at it in different ways. Okay. So. What are your bowels like? Do you have any day. diarrhoea at all? No, no. never have diarrhoea. Um, if anything, it's not not like constipated, but like it will usually be every day or every other day. I'll go, and then <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it will feel like it's not quite out. Like I don't yeah. know, it just feels heavy and yeah. just I don't know. Okay. Why don't we try some fibre gel? OK. Have you tried that before? No. no. So that's... It's, it's a sachet, it comes, okay. and it's just a fibre that you add to some squash or juice okay. or water. I mean, I still do wonder if it could be yeah. an irritable bowel type thing. Yeah. OK. And it just helps the stool go through a bit more easier. OK. OK. Yeah. I think it's worth trying yeah. for a couple of months and yeah. see if that helps. Yeah. OK. Yeah. There we go. OK. So come and see me in a couple of months to see how you're getting okay. on with this. All right, and I'll refer you for pain clinic in the Thank meantime. You. All the best. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. How can I help? Um, it's about my leg. Hmm. I want to see if anything can be done about the scar. Ah. Because it's quite hideous. Mm. And all down the back is just hanging there. Yeah. How's the sort of numbness in that foot? Is it about the same? Yes, yeah, I've got no improvement there. It's, no. still, it's still numb. And the operation was back... S December... 15. 15. Yeah. Yeah. So the level of numbness, has it got any better or is it about the same? So it's, it's still the same as when I had it done. So I don't think that's going to change. No. Lorraine has a complex past medical history. At the age of 51, she was diagnosed with a lymphoma. During the course of having chemotherapy, she developed a clot in her right leg. She then went on to develop what's called compartment syndrome and an acute ischemia of the leg. What that means is that the clot expanded and she had to have an emergency procedure called a fasciotomy, whereby you literally slit things down in the leg to release the pressure. And it's an emergency situation, otherwise you're at risk of losing the leg. But you did have a bit of what we call foot drop after the surgery. Yeah, I, st I still got foot drop, but before I couldn't even lift it up. No. You know, I, I've, I've now got control to... You seem to be walking more easily than It's a bit before. easier to talk, but I can't walk very far at all. Well, look, it's but got I think better, I've given, hasn't I've, it? Yeah, I From what you were that. going through, look how far you've oh, come. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I couldn't even walk in the beginning. Mm. Now I can walk a little bit. And, mm. yeah. When's your next haematology appointment? Next Friday. And are they happy with everything that's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. They're just monitoring you, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I go every four months now, mm. so... Uh, OK. I hope just every four months. That's all I want. <laughs> what are you hoping that they do? I'm just improve hoping... The, improve the appearance. Yeah, cos all this, if all this flesh here is just so loose. Yeah. I was wondering if maybe something could be done for it to be brought together, cos I don't really want skin graft after what I went through yeah. with the last one. Do you moisturise the skin? I do. I use bio oil on it, um, which they say for scars, yeah, don't they? Yeah, and just they? general moisturising. Yeah, I mo use moisturising creams and I use bio oil on the actual scars. 
Okay. It's a difficult one, Lorraine, because firstly, this becomes a cosmetic issue. That's what I was wondering. Which, secondly, with your medical history mm. and with the tablets that you're on, yeah. I don't think anyone will want to go near you unless they have to. I'm being completely honest. Yeah. Mm. And I'm not sure there's much that can be done there. If you open up other scars, you create scars on top of scars, mm. and it, it yeah. doesn't really help it. Yeah. I mean, would anybody be prepared to see me to discuss it, do you think? Because it is... I mean, it is ugly, isn't it? It's... Firstly, on the NHS side of things, we'd have to apply for funding yeah. for you to be seen, mm. and I don't think we will get that. Yeah. Because I'm not sure that there's much that we can do. Mm. On the whole, cosmetic surgery is not funded by the NHS. There are certain exceptional circumstances whereby a committee looks at the evidence provided to make a decision on an individual basis. So, for example, if somebody is suffering from severe emotional and functional impairment as a result of their disfigurement, uh, this may be looked at in a different way. I can discuss it with a colleague of mine. Yeah. If you're happy for me to take a picture. Yeah. Is that OK? Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's nice to see you smiling as well. Yeah. You're happier in yourself, I think. Yeah, oh gosh, I've come a long way. You have come a long way. Yeah, from what I was, because... So leave that with me, so yeah. to speak. Mm -hmm. But I can't promise anything. No, OK, that's fine. Are we supporting you enough? Do you need any further counselling with what's happened, or you mm. do feel you're happy? No, I'm OK. I've had loads of counselling. Mm. I'm not on antidepressants yeah. anymore. Mm. Um, I mean, I still get down days. Mm. Of course you do, but I think anybody anybody who hadn't been through what I've been mm. through gets down days, mm. don't they? But um, I think on the whole... I think you're actually, of how well uh, you've done. On the whole, I'm, um, I'm not doing too bad. I don't work, obviously, now. I've been retired. Mm. Mm. I just try and keep myself busy. Yes. <laughs> OK, we'll leave it at that for yeah. today, if that's OK. OK, yeah, that's fine. Nice to see you. Yeah, on you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank All right. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Robert Bees, please. Hello there. Hi there. Take Hello, all right. Robert, you're looking uncomfortable. Yeah, it's my legs still playing up and my back. I went to see, um, I went to Safe Mead. Yeah, these are the nerve conduction studies, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they'd done all that and they said they was going to write to me and I, I haven't heard nothing. No, OK, I have to say I haven't heard anything either. I'll write to the neurologist and say, look, it looks, you know, this chap's had all his tests done. Yeah. They did the electrical tests on your arm and they, your leg, didn't they? They've done it on my arm and my leg, yeah. 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 Uh, oh, just down in the dump still, really. Well, you are, aren't you? Yeah. Let's let's talk about that, cos that might be more important even than the pains, isn't yeah. it? So I, I saw, since I last saw you, I gather you were evicted from your... Yeah. Parents' council house, yeah. is that right? Yeah. You, where, are you, where are you living now? I just stay with my uh, sisters. Yeah. Uh, four days a week. Okay. And then I just stay with my daughters okay. uh, just on the weekend. So do, is that the long term plan or are you trying to get something? I'm else? trying to get somewhere. I went for a property and they said I was unsuitable. You're not in work now? No. No. How's it working out, staying with your relatives? Not very good, really. But. I've got nowhere else, so I've just yeah. got to do that. Yeah. And you're looking very down, and you said you feel quite yeah. quite down. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, it's just the loss of mum still going to me. Mm. And my sister and my dad. Mm. It's just everything's just getting to me at the moment. Mm. Come on in, have okay. a seat. I'm Dr. Graham. Hello. That's the last time we think had a water infection. Did I? Um, yeah. Um, I think this. Well, this is a cyst, yes. and I think it's getting infected. Okay. It has been once before, um, and Dr. Lee said she didn't want to cut it out because it's right on the jugular. <laughs> but over the last few days, it's it's hurting. Yeah. It didn't okay. hurt last time, but it is hurting. And has it changed as well as being painful? Is it bigger or? It's bigger and harder. Yeah. And it feels a bit warm. Okay. But um, I just know it's, it's just. No, I feel a bit sicky, but 
I don't know if that's just, I don't know, I've got a job interview tomorrow, so I don't know if I feel sick because of that <laughs> or if it's because of that. Yeah, OK. But last time, it, not at all did it hurt and it just oozed horrible pussy stuff. And nothing's come out this time? No. OK. No, so, so I don't... I'm should we just take your temperature okay. first? That's fine. 36.1. So that's normal. Just take your pulse. What's your job interview? I, um, I work in a school anyway as a teaching assistant, and it's in the same school but for a different teaching assistant role. OK. So, yeah, I'm just a bit nervous. It's ridiculous. Do you want it? Yeah. I just think it's horrible when you work there and you have to have an interview with yeah, people, people you know. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? It is horrible, OK, yeah. <laughs> let's have a look. I'll just put some gloves on. OK. It has got a little head on it, hasn't it? Oh, I don't know, has it? Mm. Oh, OK. A little white bit. Yeah, so maybe it is then, cos it doesn't usually have a head on it. Yep, it's, that's how big it is. And it's a bit red up there as well. Yeah. That's, okay. And that is sore yeah. when you touch so it. So I don't think you should try and squeeze it. No, I won't. Okay? No, 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 I won't. And no. hopefully it'll get better with yeah. some antibiotics, um, which I think is, a, is what we should do. Yeah? Yeah. So we normally give five days of fluclopsilin, OK? Yeah. One, four times a day. Okay. And if it's obviously getting worse, mm -hmm. then you come back. Or if you feel ill, like yeah. you're being sick or something. It's basically a sebaceous cyst, which yeah. is part of the... It's the hair follicle that's got a bit blocked and caused the, um, a lump, and then okay. that is prone to getting infected. So it's really common and not anything surprising, no. to be honest. As it's, this is the second time it's happened, mm -hmm. uh, you could discuss with Dr Lee whether she'd be willing to remove it. Um, but I can see why she's a bit yeah, reluctant. She's, yeah, she's a bit Yeah, she's a bit anxious about that, I think. And that's yeah. fine. That's, I don't want to, you know... Well, you don't want it's things a bit to... risky, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Is that all right? Yes, of course. That's absolutely right. And uh, good luck tomorrow. To get Thank you very much. That's all right. Fingers crossed. Yes. Bye-bye yeah. now. Thank you. Bye-bye. I just thought about if there was anything I could do to help you. Well, you sent... You gave me this letter to ring up about... Um, when I was down in the dumps before. Mm, for the kicks and counselling? Yeah. yeah. I, they rang me back and uh, said I can go to a meeting. Yeah. Which I went there and they was talking to me and yeah. everything like that. And they gave me the number. They said any time mm. you just ring. Mm. So... I think it'll be worth you, you ringing maybe and asking for some one to one well, counseling. Pain here and now with that lump as well. Yeah, okay. Let's yeah. just stick with your mood for a second because right. I don't want to I don't want to lose this opportunity to talk about that really. Yeah. Um so th these were the people you rang, yeah. wasn't it? Bristol yeah. Wellbeing Therapist. Yeah. I, I would encourage you to, to, to give them another ring, actually. Right. That's the number. Yeah. And say that you went to a group session before. Yeah. That you're very down in the dumps and and that maybe some one to one counselling would be yeah. helpful and they would They'll take that on for you. Yeah. All right, so yeah. I'd encourage you to do that. You, are you still taking the antidepressant that you were prescribed by my colleague? Yeah, yeah. Can I suggest if, if you've not had side effects, but obviously you are still quite yeah. depressed, maybe we should put that dose up to 100 well, milligrams okay. and see. OK. Yeah. You, you're probably running out of it fairly soon, actually, aren't you? Yeah. So I'm going to give you a higher dose of the antidepressants. So I put a prescription for some, yeah. some of that through to the pharmacy next yeah. door. You're going to contact those people. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to write to your neurologist. There we go. All right. Yeah. I think that's covered enough for today. Um, but I'll uh, come and see me again in a month. OK, make an appointment yeah. for a month's yeah. time. Right. Bye-bye. Well, thank you. I have got... I think it's a mole. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been a bit itchy. We call it a seborrheic keratosis, and it's right. just a little warty, stuck-on thing. Yeah. It's almost like there's a crust over the top of it, isn't there? That's been getting a little bit darker and bigger. Not that it's that big. It's kind of a little bit of a dry, scaly one. And it's just quite... it's quite soft and loose. Yeah. It? So that's more reassuring, actually. Well, the good thing about this one is that it's a little fleshy one that sticks up and you can move it around. That's what the doctor said last time. OK, Frankson, please. Hello. Good morning. I'll have a seat. Thank you. I'm Dr Jules. Hello, Dr Jules. 
I hope I'm not wasting your time, but it's just people keep telling me to come and see you because I've got this mysterious mole that suddenly appeared at the back yes. of my knee. So let's ask the standard question. Is it bleeding? No. Itching? No. But it's new? It's new and it's... But you don't, because if you have many moles... No, not really. The average number is 40. Is it? Yeah, so most of us have got a collection. Oh. So let's have a look at it. It's this one, so it's at the back of my left leg. Ah, at this point I have to do something which is oh, fraught with risk. Oh, hello. <laughs> is it this thing here? Yes. OK, well, that a, looks... There's that... a cysty thing as well. Have yeah. you seen... Have you looked at them? I, I can't see them, so really. So which is the one that, that everyone's worried about? Uh, the one that's actually coloured and looks like a mole. Well, they've got three, four of those. Oh, well, there you are. You see, I can't even see them, so I didn't know. These are obviously, quite obviously, warts. Because uh, what they're doing... That's horrible. <laughs> Look, what they're doing is, is, is uh, when, you, when you bend your knee, you're spreading them. I think the sensible thing to do is to take a photograph of them. I've done that. <laughs> I did it the other night to have a look, cos I knew I was coming to see you. You know, have a, check it again in a few months' time. It's quite hard to take, actually. Oh, I'm not suggesting you surely can get somebody else to take it, can't you? <laughs> Could do. <laughs> Hello, would you like to take a picture of my mole? I don't really have any other suggestions, because they, okay. they look completely normal. OK. All right. All right, so that's it then. Yeah, yeah. And do come back if you're worried. You know, don't... Whatever you do, don't let concerns about wasting anybody's time deter you. Uh -huh. That really... You know, this is a five-minute business. It's going to take a bit longer, but uh, all right. it's not its not a big deal at all. OK, well, thank you very much for reassuring me. Good. And okay. uh, have a nice day, thank as you. they say. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a seat. I'm Dr. Barnard. I don't I... think we've met before, no, have we? Seen you before. Um, basically, what it is, I'm a diabetic. Yes. And um, I got an infection, not an infection, sorry, I got a, um, a blister to my little toe and the next toe. Yes. Underneath, and I think it's got infected because it's really sore. I can't walk properly, and mm. there's like a red line just starting to go up there. It's not the first infection I've had in my feet before. Mm. It's Oh, goodness, that it's looks really quite sore. nasty, doesn't it? Yeah, it's and very sore. how long has it been going on for? Um, it's only started getting red and swollen yeah. the past two days, and that line just showed up this morning, but it's been sore for a week. Right. But I didn't think it was infected because I kept it clean and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, I think my toe's swollen as well, and that line's coming up, which is worrying me a bit. And um, are you under podiatry or anything like that? Have you been in the past? No, because I don't like people touching my feet. I hate it. OK. I can't bear people touching my feet. <laughs> Can I have that? Yeah. I mean, I must admit, the one on this toe I left a bit too long and it got very nasty. It's... Um... Pull that toe back for me. This one? Yeah. It's really painful, isn't yeah. it? Put your foot back down again. Fine. OK. That looks really sore. It is sore. Cos you've got the diabetes. Mm. We have to be really careful, cos you know if we leave foot infections untreated yeah. or not properly treated in diabetics, it can be yeah. quite serious. Come on in. Thank you. Have a seat. How can I help? Uh, it's my right kneecap. OK. I'm all right doing long balls, but when I stop, it seizes up. Right. And I have to let it rest for a while before I can... And if I start walking on it straight away, it hurts. Yeah. I can kneel down on this knee, but I can't mm -hmm. put this knee down properly. Yeah. No. Can we have a look at your knees? Yes. Do you want to just pull up? And could you do that with the other one as well, just so I can compare them? That's it. You can see that it's a bit swollen up there, can't you? Yeah. And if I just have a press round that side, that's OK? Yeah, that's fine. Round here? Does it actually hurt if I press down? No. OK. And if you fully straighten it, does that hurt? No? Bend it? Straighten it? Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? And if you just... Move your, your knee just so that your ankle's there, yeah. And I'll just give it a bit of a test. It's quite stable, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Good. OK, you um, 
Put your trousers back down then. Your knee is taking quite a lot of weight at the moment because it's the main joint that carries you around. Um, have you had, had thoughts about losing quite a bit of weight mm. at all? Any thoughts about drop? I mean, I think it would really help with what you're here we'll for today. Think about trying the Weetabix diet. The Weetabix diet. <laughs> so what's that one? Uh, just Weetabix three times a day, and that's it. And really? And you play your fruit. Right. Sounds a bit crazy to me. What do you think about it, really, the Weetabix diet? I think it's all right. Yeah? I mean, do you know how people successfully lose weight? Well, ex you've got to mix the exercise and the healthy eating. Yeah. Sides. Most of losing weight is simply eating less. So I actually say that most people who successfully lose weight just say, I'm going to change the way I'm going to eat for the rest mm. of my life. Because a lot of people do these diets, like a Weetabix diet, and unfortunately, when they go back to what they normally do, they just put the weight back on. So sometimes I suggest to people they just reduce the quantity, because quite often, quite a lot of us are eating more than we I need really to. I have breakfast. Sometimes I have lunch. Yeah. But I do have a dinner. Yeah. People who eat breakfast are in general thinner mm -hmm. than people who don't. And people who eat a small, regular meal three times a day are lighter than people who don't do that. Your body is sort of needs regular eating. We all eat our main meal in the evening in, the, in this country. And the problem with that is that we're having a lot of calories and then we go to bed. And actually, what, when we need the calories is the morning and the lunch, and much less in the evenings. If there's any way that you can change that around and have your main meal at lunchtime, that's supposed to be healthier. Okay. Um, if you wanted some more help about losing weight, then you could book maybe to see one of the practice nurses or something along those lines. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Fine. Okay. Thank you for that. That's all right. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Bye now. Bye bye. Can I touch your feet to see what the pulses are like? Yeah, both feet. If it's too much. No, no, it's OK. Is that very sore? Yeah, that is, yeah. OK. Patients with diabetes are at increased risk of having problems with their feet. This is because the diabetes may reduce the blood supply to the feet and may affect the sensation. This means that patients may not notice when they've got a sore foot or an injured foot. If it is not treated promptly, the patient is at increased risk of having a serious infection and ultimately, in the worst cases, at risk of amputation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some antibiotics. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you booked in with the nurse mm -hmm. to, to get it dressed and things. And then I'm going to have a look at referring you to the diabetic foot clinic. Okay. If I do that, will you go? I promise you I'll go, cos I, um, I don't... I don't want people touching my feet, but I don't yeah. want to lose my feet either. More than anything, we need them just to look at it, keep an eye on yeah. it. Thank you. so much. So look out for the appointment, but if there's going to be anything different... Yeah. ..and they're just going to give you an appointment straight away, I'll ring you. Thank okay? you so much. Thank you. OK, bye. Bye. Mr Thomas, please. That's me. Hello. Sorry, yeah. you've waited a little bit there. No, that's all right. There we go. Thank you. Right, do have a seat there. Hello. Cheers. Hiya. Hi. I'm Dr Bolam. Right. All right. Yeah. What can I do for you today? Well, um, about... It's been coming on about three weeks now, this lump. It started off... Well, didn't even notice it, really, and then uh -huh. gradually... It's not got any... Well, it's not got any bigger. It kind of... If anything, spread slightly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just fluid, okay. I guess. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, I thought I'd leave it a f few weeks yes. and it'd probably go away. I know exactly what that is. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. uh, it's a bursitis. Okay. Oh, yes. So we all have fluid filled sacs around our joints called bursi. Right. Okay. Yeah. Which can get swollen all of a sudden. Okay. Usually caused by repetitive trauma. So that one there, people get them on their knees often. Anybody yeah, can get it. I got you. So that's an electron on that one over the outside of the elbow. All right. Is yeah. it painful? No. No, not, not painful. Not, maybe okay. If you put pressure on it, like yeah, lean on yeah. it or something, it might be right. annoying. They can get infected, but it doesn't look infected. So we don't need antibiotics. All oh, right? right. Okay. Usually the first line is is to take an anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Get something to compress it, so go and buy yourself an elbow support from the chemist, yeah, right? Yeah, OK. Put ice on it, and it usually just goes away. 
all right? Brilliant. And only if it gets red and hot and horrible do we need antibiotics, and we're not at that stage at the moment, certainly. All right? Yes, have a little read of this. Yeah, sure, thanks. Tells you how to treat it. Well, well, well. Um, yeah, there's... Well, yeah, I lost the wife coming up five years August, and s seeing her in, in conditions that she was in, it does tend to make you... Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. come to the doctors yeah. very no, no, often no, no, at no. all, but it suddenly I can... you think, well, one thing, okay, yes. keep on top of yes, it. Yes, you know. I can absolutely assure you that's nothing. Ah, serious. lovely. 100%, all, all actually. Right. Thank yeah. you very much. For all right, OK. All right, OK. Thank you, doctor. OK. Have a read of that. Okay. Yeah. Do what it says. Yeah, thank you all very, right. very much. Is that OK? Yes, thank you, all doctor. Right. OK. Cheers now. All right, Bye -bye. have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um... It's all right, I've got a bit of OCD as well, don't worry. <laughs> it's, um, not worth talking about, I just handle it. All right. Okay. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, have a nice day. And you? Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Do you feel better now? Yeah, I feel better. <laughs> You're going to say bye now? <laughs> yeah, Reluctantly. <laughs> See ya.